okay, I was going to save this for the episode. I counted six Seth Rogen laughs. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we made Seth Rogen jokes in uh, Kung Fu Panda. We were not prepared. Yeah, that I was about was, to say. That, that was like, that was like uh, thinking that like, oh, uh, Owen Wilson does a, does a lot of wow in Cars 2 when, when Cars 3. It's right there. <laughs> it's like in the <laughs> Cars 3. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Living the DreamWorks, episode 18, where we talk about every single DreamWorks animated film and all the ones that have Seth Rogen in them, yeah. which is a little too many, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're only on number two. I'm the Master Wash. I'm Random Cockroach here. I'm Claire. You're scared, Claire. I'm Sclary. And today we are talking about the first of many in the Seth Rogen franchise. What are you talking about? Monsters vs. Aliens. Kung Fu Panda had Seth Rogen. This is, this is the also a franchise technically. This has a, this has a TV show. We're yes, not going to talk about it. We're not talking that. about it, but it does. We're not talking about it, it especially because it's butt ugly. <laughs> Does anyone have experience with this film? Uh, can I go first? Yeah. Sure. Had none. Then we recorded Madagascar Escape to Africa and Random and Wash were like, oh yeah, all I know is that Stephen Colbert does this one song. And I'm like, okay, I've never heard of that song. It means nothing to me. And then I watched the movie. Listen, I just, I just want to preface this podcast by saying one thing. I don't care about Crazy Frog. That said, <laughs> not crazy that, said frog. that said, if you disrespect Crazy Frog, I will kill everyone in this room and then myself. If you disrespect Crazy Frog, I'll hit the nuclear button. <laughs> it's which not is- Crazy Frog. <laughs> yes, it is. It's Axel F from <laughs> b- from Beverly Hills Cop, which Crazy Frog did a cover of. <laughs> yeah, but Crazy Frog from Grace. <laughs> the millennials know what is crazy. No. No. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever. It's Crazy Frog to me. Oh, man. I just wish the president went ding, ding. <laughs> bear, bear. <laughs> Genuinely no history with this. I have history with Stephen Colbert, but nothing with Monsters vs. Aliens. Oh, yes. I, 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 then I will uh, segue from that. I have a lot of history with uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, but that was pretty much all I really knew. Like, like, like we said earlier, like all, all I knew going into this was uh, Stephen Colbert and a uh, giant woman, and uh, annoying blob. That was it. I, I didn't know anything else going Actually, into it. Actually, okay, I hate to interrupt, sorry, random, but technically Wash is a little bit more to that by, like, the most absolute of stretches. Wash posts, I, no, I posted a screen cap in our Discord server of the fish dude, the fish guy, yes. and Wash goes, I can tell just by looking at this, that's the Seth Rogen character. <laughs> No, no, here's the thing. I said that, and I didn't know Seth Rogen was in this movie. Yes, yes. I, that was how I was, I was right, but I was off by one. Yeah. I was like, you got, you got the wrong comedian there. No. Uh, normally, this is the part where I would be like, aha, actually, I do have experience in this movie. No, absolutely not. I remember watching the trailers. And I knew Stephen Colbert yeah. was in it, mm-hmm. and the only I would catch it a bit on cable. But the only time I caught it on cable would, that I remember was guess what? The piano scene. And then I'd turn it off and watch something else. And then we had to watch it. Okay, here's a here's a plot synopsis. There is a uh, mild mannered Susan Murphy uh, who gets hit by a radioactive. Meteorite? I feel like I just got hit by a meteorite. Oh, that happens to me. I felt the same thing. <laughs> she gets hit by and on her wedding day, and then it, it makes her grow gigantic or ginormic, if you will. And um, she gets taken away by the uh, by the government uh, into a top secret facility in Area Fifty. 
where uh, they they hold all of these essentially classic movie monsters uh, that that they uh, tell the uh, the public are, are fake. Through that same meteorite, the uh, or meteoroid, the an alien comes to t- to take uh, to try to take over the uh, the world, and it's America's idea to use these monsters to fight the aliens, and they do. That is the plot of Monsters vs. Aliens. It is monsters fighting aliens. Well, f- it, fighting what? an alien. Really. Yeah. In the words of Victor Quartemay, what you see is what you get. Yes. Can I just say something? Oh boy. Um, is this, is this therapy exercise already? <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is this is something that made me laugh, but the, for the wrong reasons. Okay. When Susan was out, the shot of Susan getting crushed by the meteorite. Remind me way too much of The Sims. You're gonna have to explain I, I, I that one. I kinda get it. In The Sims 2 or Sims 3 or Sims 4 or whatever, you can literally have a cheat code put in so a Sim will die by a meteorite and it will just be so sudden. And just like, all of a sudden they'll be like walking around like, huh? Dead. But it just reminded me too much of The Sims. So with that scene, I will say that like, my when, when I watched it, my immediate thought was, why is he running like directly into the path of yeah. the meteorite? <laughs> she didn't like go to the left or to the right. She went towards the meteor. Yeah, and, and then and then Shaka, she gets hit by it. And, you know, I was thinking that, and then earlier today I went on my morning walk, and I was just going down a sidewalk, and there was a squirrel in front of me, and the squirrel could have it, it, it was like running away a bit, but. It didn't like go to the left or go to the right. It just kept running away in a straight line. <laughs> Even when it, when there was a tree right next to it, I was thinking, okay, it's gonna run up the tree. No, it kept going. <laughs> so maybe so you're saying I, ginor- yeah, I'm saying that ginormica is a squirrel. Yes. Yeah, of yes. course, of course. <laughs> okay. If I'm gonna leave a comment for that scene, I don't know why, but the lion, I feel like I just got hit by a meteorite, has really stuck with me. <laughs> I don't know, not even the joke! Like, the joke of, like, oh, everybody feels like that on their wedding day, which, like, oh, you know, cute joke, but specifically, yeah. it's, it's it's because it's so specific. It's not like, oh, man, I feel like I got, like, hit by a train, or, oh, it was, like, yeah. a ton of breaks. Is, I feel like I just got hit by a meteorite. It, she gets hit, but I guess she becomes the rock? I never got... The it's, quantonium or whatever that was inside, she absorbed it through contact. I think that was the idea. Yeah, because the, gl- the glowing so, disappeared. So like, yeah, and I guess, like, there's no evidence of this asteroid, or that this doesn't matter. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's honestly, just... the, I mean, it doesn't the matter. lady that went to find her and what she said, she's going to buy a meteorite, um, she said nothing. So I'm thinking she got hit by the asteroid and... The asteroid itself was, like, staying in its physical form through the quantonium, which was absorbed inside of her body. Thus, when... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, the movie doesn't care, neither should we. The, it's, it's a homage. All, yes, all of these yes. are, 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 are homages. Yes. We, have the, yep. uh, we have the 50-foot uh, woman who, according to uh, Wikipedia, Dynamica is 49 feet 11 inches. I, I didn't hear that said in the movie, but I, that would be a uh, pretty, uh, pretty I was, joke. All I remember, there was so, like, there's so many jokes in that scene, yeah. bad and good. Uh, but again, again, I feel like this movie has a talent of making me laugh for the wrong reasons. You just see a clip of the father just going, get me the government, and just jumps out no, the window. No, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's for the right reason. That's, for the right, that's reason. for the right reason. That's for the right reason. No, no, no. That's, Which, that's... by default, makes it better than most of Madagascar 2. I think I know where this conversation is going, so I will be uh, the one to say, I know when this movie came out, it was slammed. I have heard yep. through through the the vineyard, I have heard so much bad about this. And I wasn't expecting, I never go into movies expecting anything. Is it good? Is it bad? Duh. I don't know. I'm going in expecting a movie, and every time I go, that was a movie. I oh. thought Monsters vs. Aliens was fine. I thought it was fine. I thought it was... Fine, I, I I'm like solidly fine. Like when people I'm trying to think of like what a good point of comparison is. Um, I don't want to spoil anything on my rankings though. I'm trying to think of it as something outside of DreamWorks. Um, yeah, I want to say like yeah, no Finding Dory. Yeah, no Finding Dory. That's it. <laughs> Looking at my rankings, like yeah, I would I would say like Finding Dory, like that ballpark. 
I think Finding Dory had higher highs, but like to where I would put Finding Dory, like that's kind of where I put this. I th- yeah, I think fi- uh, Finding Dory probably has higher highs. Yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna say because I, I was gonna say something, but that that, that would also uh, spoil. Yeah, my that's ranking. what makes it so hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it is hard. So th- this was like consistently serviceable. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I still have problems. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, some oh problems with it. I I was surprised that I was laughing like a lot and Shit. like stifling myself and like <laughs> maybe I just like monsters. I don't know. I was a little kid. I was a little like a little kid that would read up like uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Like I was used into like cryptids and stuff. I don't watch horror movies usually, but like I got all of all of the you know uh, uh, Attack of the Fifty First Woman. Uh, the blob with the, they even like recreated the the shot of the blob coming out of the doors. Like, <laughs> which really, it, there are kind of, oh my god, the, the, the homages are actually like yeah, the fly, Christopher from the Black Lagoon. Oh god, oh and, and uh, uh, of course like Godzilla and, oh, and yeah. like uh, and, yeah. and all those like Japanese uh, uh, movie monsters. Just it's far more parodic than a uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda. But yeah. there's a similar sort of love and appreciation for it. Yeah. I mean, I guess after Kung Fu Panda, if it went in this direction, uh, it would have been less impressive. It, it's very funny, Watch, that you say, like, I was surprised by how much I was laughing. I'm kind of the reverse. I wasn't laughing much, but I was thinking, like, and I never think this, but I was thinking, like, <laughs> man, if this wasn't a comedy, like, there were some parts that actually hit me, like, I mean, it was too early in the movie to get too big of a reaction, especially since it was after we were introduced to, like, Seth Rogen Blob. But yeah. when she <laughs> and Gigantica Susan is getting the orientation, and the the general commander guy brings her to her, her cell, and yeah. she's like, I don't want to be in this cell, I want to go back to my family, to my home, to Derek. And he's like, well, yeah. <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. He goes, well, I sprucened up the cell a little bit to make it feel more like home. It's just this little sticker that's just hanging there. That no, was... it's, a, it's a poster, but it looks like a sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like that's a good point. That's a good point. You're right. But like, it's a sticker to Ginormica. Yeah, yeah. But like when when she went in there and the movie's just like really quiet and just like the I guess like claustrophobia of her situation is sinking in and she's like crying because she misses home. I'm like, if this happened like later in the movie, like I would have cried. Like monsters <laughs> versus aliens. Had the potential. But think of monsters, DreamWorks is monsters versus alien. <laughs> Got me feeling emotional. What is this? Like the, I like the I like the line was like, but I want a real kitty hanging from a real tree. That was also a great line. Yes. <laughs> I guess uh, we can start off talking about Ginormica. Gigantica. No, Ginormica. Oh, is it that get it wrong? You got it wrong, yeah. <laughs> you got it. Okay. You got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Gino- I, I think Gigantica is taken, so they have to. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> have to go. Like, for- that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ginormica. I thought that uh, Reese Witherspoon was better used in other films, and she was fine for me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. She was fine. She played the role. The trouble for me is that like. Her whole character is is being mild mannered. It's it's just not as interesting. There's yeah. just not as much to talk about. And like the, those, what what could have been those like emotional moments just aren't there because I don't care that much about Dynamica. I, I I hate to agree, but like I didn't really like feel for her as much. I mean, she was a decent character, I guess, but I don't know. Didn't really click with me compared to other characters like Poe did or like Shifu. Yeah. I will say though, her design is pretty cool. Or no, rather, let me explain it. The details, like like you could see like the pores and like the wrinkles and like all the details of hum yeah. of, of it. And I think this is maybe this is gonna deviate from Ginormica a bit, but the humans look bad. <laughs> Beta Megamine. <laughs> Beta Megamind, yeah. They they look more like aliens than the aliens? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, Stephen Colbert. Oh. oh, my God, Stephen Colbert. That final shot, that, like, uh, mid credit scene, when he, like, sticks his head into into uh, the frame, I, it's like, oh, my God. Especially, like, whenever you get, like, a wide shot of Stephen Colbert, like, his head compared to the rest of his body is just shockingly bad. Yep. <laughs> And like, like I guess, I guess, like 
Dynamic Club we got used to pretty well. It's still trying to uh, find that balance of like cartoony, but it just it weirdly looked cheap in terms yeah. of character design. I don't know how you, I don't know how you do that. I don't know, but like I don't know. The silver hair was kind of cool. You're gonna have like a giant woman like making it uh, more interesting with like the uh, the white hair. Like yeah, fine. But the comedy from her was not necessarily her making the quip line. She did have some funny lines occasionally. Yeah. Um, but, like, I feel it was more, like, her interacting with the st- and the stuff around her was funny. Like, the whole, like... Again, a specific example of that is, like, when they throw a needle at her and she takes the needle out <laughs> and love, throws like, it at the guy. Slams it at the guy. He slams it at the guy's foot and he looks... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I I knew about that because of a, of a meme. It, it's just not it's, for me. It's just not as much to uh, to, to say about her. I and wish she's, she's the protagonist. I feel, I really feel like they she could have been more than just the the audience to it. And, and, and like they they did give her like uh, her backstory, and it's just an it's it's a frustrating backstory. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not not a not an annoying backstory. A frustrating one because it, it's. As soon as you see it, like, in that, like, first five minutes, you already know what's happening. Yeah. You can already I, I don't see- think it's that bad. I mean, you, okay, everything with Derek, yes. Yeah, I, yeah that's, Derek the is- The rest of the movie, I mean, I'm not saying, like, you know, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, but <laughs> Madagascar 2, this was not. <laughs> well, we, can, we can agree that, like, Derek. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Derek sucked. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's the, not the even- worst part is, is that it's, like, it's almost framed in a way like the I guess it's that's not the writing, but like the performance is like almost done in a way where it's like, oh, maybe he is genuine. Like I didn't buy it, but it's like maybe he could be, and then he wasn't. It's like, yeah, like Paul Rudd, he can play asshole. Like anybody who's watched like What Hot American Summer would know that he can he can definitely play like a dick. Yeah, he's his whole thing is vain. Period. That's it. Yeah, it's. It, it. It, it, there's nothing else to it, and, and, and like that that co- to jump way ahead, that confrontation, uh, when he's just like, "Do you really think I should like put my stuff aside because of what you went through?" And it's like, uh, and I think that's the problem because her motivation is to get with Derek, and we don't care about Derek. No, it's it's not until she yeah, he breaks up with her and he's like. Fuck Derek, and I'm like, yeah. Where I start to like get a little bit more interested in her and what yeah. she's doing. I will, I will definitely say. Um, and again, the fact that I can say this about DreamWorks is monsters versus aliens. Okay, I very much liked once she was okay with being Dynormica, She lost it, and she had a decision to make on whether or not she would stay as Dynormica or go back to being normal. And she chose to go back to being Ginormica because yeah. she liked that that new life of hers that she got more than what she was originally symbolizing with Derek. Because in becoming giant, when you're a giant, you can't be mild mannered. You're giant. Part of being yeah, large yeah. means being in charge. You can't. Yeah, yeah. That was, like, that was, like, yeah. That was on the fly. I'm proud of that one. Um, <laughs> like she's uh-huh. suddenly empowered. Yeah, yeah. She's empowered. Exactly. Exactly. It's not. It's not. I hate to say it's like a standard men versus women thing, but she's not looking up at people anymore. She's looking down <laughs> on them now. She has that power. And yeah. that, that is it an impressive shot? Probably not. But when the bad guy was like, there's nothing you can do. And she's like, there is one thing. And she points the laser. Yeah. Shoots the thing on the top and the uh, quantonium falls on her. I was like, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm popping off at DreamWorks is monsters versus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and, and you know what? Like, it could have just easily been like, like she loses her power, mope and dope. She still stays in power. She still stays oh, yeah. in power. If I cared about her more, that would have been that would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's potentially my least favorite part of the film. No, no. I, 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 I gotta think no about it. I gotta think about going. it. There's an easy answer. Uh huh. Uh huh. I I think I think what I like the most about okay, well two of the three other monsters not the obvious one but the two of the three monsters that weren't like infuriating right i kind of liked that um i mean her impression of Derek is what went off on them so i I really like when um you know she had or he had broken up with her i guess and (laughs) funny shot of her sitting on the gas station that was really good um 
Yeah. But when you like, they go up there, you know, like they're all down, but they're trying to cheer up and, you know, they're just like, you know, oh, yeah, Derek, you know, Derek's great, right? Like, I don't, it's like the way that the ant and the sea monster saw Derek through her, I thought was neat. The yeah. other one, no. <laughs> But the other two, it's like, oh, you know, like, like, oh, this Derek, you know, he's got to be great. He's got to be great. Like, she's hyping him up and they're like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, they're like celebrating something together. They're becoming friends. Like, yeah, oh, sure. it's actually like I could see how she would get along with two of these three. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Do we want to talk about them now? Is there anything else we want to say about Ginormica? I guess I'll just leave. I won't say anything else because I've been talking for a while. I'll just leave off with I definitely liked her more than you two did. Uh, still just good um probably fine but i'll give the movie the benefit of the doubt and say good but i'm gonna say fine again not bad not bad at all no not just not, not bad just like not very interesting i think i liked her better more closer to the later half of the film than anything oh she had again she was again but she was mostly fine like i didn't hate her at all but like favorite character in this film probably not but again fine Okay, can we get the obvious out of the way? Can we rip the band-aid off or do you want to talk about other characters? I can't first? believe in when did this movie come out? 2009. I can't believe in 2009 that DreamWorks had their first openly gay character. I get it. I get it. it took a bit, but <laughs> Derek! I, 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 I maybe like maybe by Maybe by maybe by. I mean, we don't know the, the gender jello. of the gelatin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we I, I think the, uh, the the gelatin was a she, uh, but yeah, we don't know. Yeah, uh, she she could have given the guy the gelatin a fake number. Who knows? But but I'm very proud of of Kastenberg for uh, for DreamWorks first gay blob. Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations! After the first gay dog, we've gone. <laughs> Hey, 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 come on. That's not DreamWorks. Come on. Uh, all right, all right. That's all right. All right. Yeah, that, yeah, this this character sucks. <laughs> oh my god. Legitimately like I was I was comfortable calling this movie I would be, sorry, comfortable calling this movie like actually really good. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, boy. So this is what it's like on the other side. Wait, did you like him? I like Bob! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, this is... Me, I mean, this me, flush, the, flush, I, flush, me flush. the... the I hate... I like, like, Miguel, like, infuriates me. <laughs> me. I like Bob. Wash, Wash, you know I love you with all my heart. You're never the one who likes something. Yeah, it's I always me or random. Always. I know. How the fuck you like do you love Miguel? Do you love this more than Miguel? How the <laughs> fuck? I watched Road to El Dorado recently. I can't. It's not even like I can be like, oh, maybe he was better if I rewatch. No, I watched it like literally a week before. I like how the fuck. <laughs> I like Bob's face more. <laughs> I li- oh, <laughs> that's okay. I, I thought he had a, I thought he had a, a funnier face than Miguel. Well, oh, so what I, if Mi- I, okay? So I would definitely agree that there were many, many, many moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. where it's like, come on, you're pushing it, but. God, when I told you, like, I was surprised with how much I laughed, it's mainly with Bob. I, I, I don't know what it is. I, it might be how, how they animated him. There, there was something, like, semi-appealing to me about Bob, and that's, like, impossible for me to explain, because every five minutes he does this thing. <laughs> I, I even referenced it at this, like, like, the, the, uh, Janomica kicks him into the sky, and he just, he decides to do, <laughs> which just kind of shocked me into laughter more than... <laughs> It's a really, really well done blob. Like, like for especially for this era of CGI, there's just something weirdly appealing about when 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 Bob moves around and 
I can't explain myself. I can't. I there was I didn't hate Bob. Did you like Bob? I think I'm gonna have to go on the side of like Bob. Like slightly knowing full well that he is extremely annoying. So I remember before watching Madagascar 2, I'm like, okay, this is the sequel to one of the zaniest DreamWorks movies. This is gonna yeah. be this is gonna be absolutely insane. Turns out I was one movie too early. Watch <laughs> like Bob. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to break it to you, buddy. Um, I'm going. I'll, I'll say this: I probably liked him more than Random. Oh, good. So, so we're one equal. <laughs> I'm willing we're to meet halfway. You, uh, almost a quarter of the way there. <laughs> almost a quarter of the way. <laughs> I will <laughs> say I agree. I agree with this. I am a big fan of blobs, like the blob yeah. style. Slimes. I had, on my VTuber model, I had a little slime buddy for a while. I just, I like slime. Slime is just, for some reason, it is very almost borderline, like, hypnotic to look at, right? Just the way that, yeah. like, it moves, the way it shakes, the way it interacts with surfaces. I don't know if I would say the the <laughs> sound it makes. I don't know about that. No. But, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my problem with Bob is just weird comparison however if we're gonna talk about the one thing that watch like we're gonna talk or i'm sorry the thing that only watch likes we're gonna talk about the thing that only i like it's like a more annoying mater like mater has that charm to him where if yeah if, if i know there are people that don't like mater and that's fine but if a lot of people that do like mater a big part of it is like oh well you know a little bit of mater goes a long way the movie does knows not to really overuse him and yeah like only 60% of his jokes work, sure, like 40% of them don't. But he's used sparingly enough and spread far apart enough that that 60% like really stands out. Bob is like, what, 95.5? <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. I think like... I would go that far. I almost don't want to blame Seth Rogen. Almost. Almost don't want to blame Seth Rogen. Like, I just thought he was annoying. <laughs> so Random has been quiet doing this. He's just been, he's just been, like, giving these staffy looks. He's gonna start by saying, Arlo! <laughs> God, the fact that he's not laughing concerns me. <laughs> he's gonna start, I will say! <laughs> Anyways, the timer's up. Final five! <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 right, random, we're gonna, okay. We're gonna up long enough, random, go. <laughs> he's better than Paul. What? <laughs> what? Paul Rudd. No, no. The, the, the alien. Oh, he, Paul. Oh, the God. alien the, Paul. The, the, uh, the alien Paul is like born. Yeah. yeah born. Monsters but alien. honestly, I. There were moments where he may have gotten like maybe a tiny chuckle out of me, maybe, but I'm with Claire. I can't even blame Seth Rogen entirely for this one. Like, I feel like the kid. Like, again, the anim. I, I get your point. The animation mm -hmm. looks pretty cool. Yeah. Like, the idea of a blob. Just animating, um, how it like moves around, how it gets stuck to the robot's foot, how when it eats, it literally just dissolves, dissolves everything. Yeah, yeah, like the, it, like a they, D and D blob. <laughs> the animation, pretty creative. Oh yeah, he has no brain. I get the joke. I get, I get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> they the, really you, just threw it in. He's stupid. That's his character. You know what though. It's not, it's, it, at no point does it does, like, the, the over-the-head, like, mockishness that, that, like, made, that made, uh, Ranchers go insane, which is, uh, I'm not I'm stupid. stupid. It never, that never happened. He's, he's, he is himself all the way through. I guess I do also like, I mean, this is less on Bob and more on the script, but I do like that there was no point where it's like, wow, I may not have a brain. But I sure did come up with a good... I, I mean, there's like... It's close. He goes, it's close, I may not have a brain, it, but I have a plan. But it isn't yeah. like, Bob, you did it. And it's because you don't... We love you because you don't have a brain. It's like... It's a joke, which like... It's okay. It's one joke, and it's like two seconds. I'll be honest. Like, again, like it's not Bob, though. I just feel like it's circumstance that it's like, oh, Bob had a you know pretty good line. If anything, it felt like... Did he ever say, because I know the ant guy was like, oh, he doesn't have a brain. Did Bob ever say that? No, he doesn't know. Yeah, like, I was kind of under the impression that he's just, like, didn't, uh, maybe he did, I don't remember, because 
kind of blocked him out of my mind. I, I remember know. more about the guy at the start of the movie who said, I only took this job because I don't have to do anything. I remember more about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And who is, like, screaming a lot, too? There's a lot of screaming There's in this a lot movie. Of screaming. Yes. I did not care about uh, Bob. I, I mean, again, he had some maybe good lines. Again, better than Paul. But do, do, okay, it's just uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, watch. What about, I'm sorry. What about the like when when Ginormica was just like Bob, get everybody off the bridge, and Bob like picks up a car and is ready to like throw it off the bridge. Come on, I see you smiling. I, I am, and I hate it. <laughs> Come on, that I was... mean, I'm smiling because I have to by default. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay one Bob moment that straight up got me to, like, actually laugh. And it was the bridge, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it. It's not okay. that. It's when Ginormica is going, she's being crushed by the pincers, and she shouts out to everybody, like, help, help, help! And Bob goes, what? <laughs> there was this bird over there. Yeah, there was a bird there's over there. Bird. There's, look at the bird. Like, fine. Fine. Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, Wash with Mater and Cars 3, you are a bad person. Like, I don't know if it's like that, but <laughs> I laugh. Good good callback. Good callback. It, it, maybe that's what Bob is to me. Yeah, yeah maybe what Mater is to me is what Bob is. <laughs> or like when when uh they they put on disgu the disguises to look like the other clones and like the clones are like really dumb. They fool the uh one of them into giving a gun and Bob says, Hey guys, check this out, and nearly shoot some dead. Okay, I don't know. That, <laughs> that didn't make me laugh so much. I loved when the same thing happened with the cockroach. Because, like, he's the smart one. He's the one who's, yeah. like, intelligent, <laughs> shaming Bob, and then he just does the same thing. Like, yeah, like, that <laughs> was like, oh, <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I, I, I again, it's impossible for me to explain but because, like, I agree that he is annoying. But for me, that was... That was really part of the appeal with the, I don't know, the, like when they're playing Go Fish, that game, that I, there's something about uh, Death Rogan's delivery there that I, that I like, but it's, again, I can't, I can't explain this very well, so we've, <laughs> it's, it's something that we've talked yeah, more we about Yeah, we talk Bob way too much about, about Bob. Tonomica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not fully established, I'm going to have to cut so much of this out. But um, now that now that we now that we've, we've you're done shaming me for for loving Bob, uh, let's talk about let's talk let's talk about uh, Hugh Laurie, who yeah, uh, who, who I found out was Hugh Laurie like yeah, five minutes the cockroach, before we who is this recording. my favorite monster by far, by far. Yeah, I loved him more than I thought I was going to. He's energetic. He's smart. He does. He has a lot of funny lines. His design's really cool. Like, he's just the regular, like, the way he's, like, and his backstory, I love how it's, like, filmed in black and white, and he's yeah. just, he's just a mad scientist who's just, like, I want to live to be a cockroach. He wants to survive, and, and like, he gets the survival he is of the a cockroach. Only, I mean, well, and I, mean, that, I guess the others have their moments, but, like, outside of Ginormico, who's, like, you know, main character, competent one, whatever, he's the only one that, like, does stuff. Yeah! So you, okay, you know what it is when... Ginormica was like, you can build this machine with all of these random parts. I'm like, he's double D. Oh my god! <laughs> Not complaining, <laughs> but he's double D. He's literally the double D of the group. Bob is Ed. <laughs> and I guess... insult Ed, please. None, none, none of the other characters are Ed and Eddie. It's just, this is the double D of the group. We can leave it there. Yeah, I gotcha. I wouldn't say that uh, Dr. Cockroach's PhD is like the scary one of the group, but he's definitely like I don't know if they really like San Francisco or they just think like that's a cool location, but they figured out all the the jokes to fit, to do in a in a place like San Francisco. The 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 long the long incline, the uh the the uh what are they called? Uh, trolleys. Uh, the which which like Doctor Cockroach like cre like like fixes up into like a jet powered. Train it just falls into that the sea. Just falls into the sea. Falls into the sea. Yeah, it, it's, it's like okay. What, what did we do exactly? Well, but, no, no, he does some cool things where like he literally goes into machine. He's like, you can't kill a cockroach, uh, and then you just it's completely yeah, crushed. He just, and he, just he lives. He lives. Times. He lives, and he just and he like goes. He, he tries to like 
I don't want to say his like future. Oh, I'm yeah, saying yeah, in that yeah, particular yeah. moment, like what what did that what did that invention like <laughs> okay, achieve? Yeah. But even then, he's like like the others are just playing go fish. He's like actively trying to help in a weird way, yeah. help Ginormica yeah, try help, to get better. He, yeah, he's help. It's because if he wants to do experiments, uh, but... yeah. Yeah. which I really like. She asks that, and then when he goes to do it again, he just does the evil laugh again anyway. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> I keep thinking double D, but, like, just this level of, like, you know, I'm holier than thou, even though he isn't. When they're getting fed, and Bob is eating, yeah. you know, I forget what it's e- he's eating. Oh, oh, he's eating, like, uh, uh some slob or something. Yeah, some, something like, like that. And Dr. Cockroach is like, ugh, filth. And then there's poor garbage, and he's like, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that, it doesn't work on its own, but I like at prefacing that. Is him saying yep. you're eating such a filth? <laughs> yeah, that that is a good point. That that like a lot of the comedy comes from him, like acting smarter than he is. Yes, that's what I like about him. Like, I guess I yeah. can't compare him to Double D in that regard because Double D is like actually like how do you yeah. do this? <laughs> yeah. Doctor Cockroach, yeah. like I mean, aside from like the standard man scientist stuff, it's like oh okay, he's just kind of you know yeah. weird. <laughs> Although another joke I really liked when they were going through the cells. Do you have some lithium ion that you could spare for me? Restrict <laughs> access to his toy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's been trying to create like a spaceship with Legos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I definitely agree that he's probably my favorite of the monsters. The missing link. Not, now that we've established how I feel about Bob. Of course. <laughs> He he's the one that's kind of tied up with Dynamica. For me. Yeah, like I feel like they just didn't know what to do with him. They, I think they were trying to make him like a cocky guy, and they're they're suddenly like trying to establish that, but they forgot to like give him things to do. Yeah, like literally yeah. in the battle, he just gets is knocked unconscious most of the time. Like in the battle yeah. of the bridge. Like, like they're, they're trying to give him like an, an acting thing where he's like, like uh, swimming through the the sewers, and it's like a like a really tense thing, and then he like slams into the the, the lid of the sewer, ow. like dunk, ow. ow, and then it comes that pays off later on, yes, which I yes, appreciate. That, that <laughs> like once he's out, what does he do? He gets taken in by Doctor Cockroach, and then he's like, dance there on the bridge. Like, like, I feel like Bob did more than 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 Missing Link did. Yeah, literally, Missing Link was knocked out the entire like fight. Yeah, yeah. And they do do something about that. Like, yeah, I was useless and whatever. But like, it doesn't really go anywhere. If there is a moment that I wish was tied to earlier in the movie, it's when uh, Draenormic, uh gets out of the crumbling uh, tower when it starts to self destruct, and the other monsters get locked in. And he's the one who says, "You know, you go. We'll stay here." Like. Because, I mean, he is, they were building him up to be the cocky one. That should be, like, a big character moment. But I just kind of remember yeah. being like, like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, I know, especially recently, I, I, I nitpick a lot. I just think it's really fun. But, like, yeah. on the whole, I'm not that hard to please. Like, I was, I'm fine with Jay Normica. I'm fine with Dr. Cockroach. Bob is a whole different can of worms. Sorry, watch. But, I mean, yeah. like, I, Missing Link, I still thought was, like, fine. He's just the one that I noticed, like, you know, oh. You know, they really don't have anything to do with him. And his no. character arc resolves weirdly. Yeah. And he is, like, the one who gets along with the giant one. Like, when the giant one cries at the start of the movie, he's the one who calms him down. And then you know, they do nothing together until the giant one, quote-unquote, dies. And yeah. then, I mean, we'll talk about whatever the giant moth's name is or whatever. Insects, whatever. Insectosaurus? Insectosaurus, I think so, yeah. They have, like, two scenes together, and it's... I just don't think they really knew what they wanted to do with Missing Link. And if they did, they didn't know how to commit to it. Yeah, know? I agree. They just... Yeah. It just seems like missed potential, which is a shame, because Will Arnett voices him just fine. Like... I liked his voice. I liked his voice. I like I like his voice. I like Will Arnett, and and I, I, I like him in uh, um in Arrested Development. I like him as Lego Batman. Like, he, he's, a, he's a great... He's a great actor. It's just given... So little to do here, and like, like I guess like the payoff at the end is that like suddenly all these like uh, uh, all these like women are like attracted to him, which I guess is what he always wanted. Yeah, that's so weird. I, again, it screams missed potential for me. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, scream. That's definitely, <laughs> definitely scream. Could you get her out of here? Oh, God, that joke should have worked. Yeah, it should have. Go. Yeah, it worked, that go, it worked joke out is something that was, like, annoying. an easy way to make that joke work that they didn't go and with. And they tried, we'll right. especially, like, with the end when it, they hear the scream. Yeah, again, no, the Steven first time, don't change anything. It was fine. Second time, yeah. get her out of here. Third time, Stephen Colbert. All you had to do. Yeah. Oh, they were yeah. more monsters, so they destroyed it. it. And the, the thing is, like, there's one that's kind of good, too. It's, it happens, like, two or three times. He's talking about, I think it's Bob. He's talking about Bob. He waits. She doesn't scream. He goes, oh, okay. And then he keeps talking. And then when they get to the next one, she screams again. And that's when he says, get her out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, but I it's see like, what you mean. Still could have done it, even if still one less. <laughs> what if she was attracted to Missing Link? Yeah. What if that was it? Oh, my God. You should have wrote this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I would have made Bob even more annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Dinormiga would have been the main character until she grew giant and met Bob, and then Bob would have become the main character. Yeah. Uh, the, res- the resolution of the movie is every character saying, We need to learn to be more like Bob, and everyone simultaneously going, <laughs> and, and then the world gets in a nuclear war. <laughs> Let's get in a nuclear- um, Shooting each other down, going, <laughs> Do we want to talk about the humans now? Stephen Colbert plays Crazy Fry. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. He plays Axe to Laugh. Crazy Frog. Yeah, he plays Crazy Frog here, and Sans is in Coco. I am a brave president. I am a brave oh, that was president. A, that, that was a good line. That was a good, it, it, you, could, you could tell that, like, they brought in Stephen Colbert for, like, uh, the political oh satire. Oh, my God. So oh, obvious. my God. <laughs> like, like, it is... It's not as biting as um, the Sam and Max. Yeah. Uh, like, when they went to the White House. Yeah, like, yeah. I played that recently. Like, that still is... So excellent good. So good. but uh it's not it's not to that level but you could tell that that uh stephen colbert was having a lot of fun i, I we, we already talked about it at the start i really wish that his head was, didn't look like that yeah his it's so uh, strange it looks like an eastern island head mixed with one of the mount rushmore heads i, I kind of like it but not in a way that's like i i, I kind of i think i like the design of it because it's so weird the problem is the actual, like, you know, the model. That's what my problem yeah. is. Yeah. It, it, it's, the, it's the fact that, like, it's that huge of a head on top of that skinny and plain of a body. Like, I mean, it's it just still kind of it... looks funny to me, but, the, like, the, the animation <laughs> style of the humans, I guess, of the movie in general, I didn't like. So that's kind of where my problem is. Yeah. But if, if, if we're going to talk about him, though, I mean, like... I think Random brought it up before. I think my single favorite joke of the movie... Don't press that button. It'll start a nuclear war. Press the giant red button next to it. He presses it. Who designed <laughs> this? You did, sir. sir. Oh, I see. The, the mid the mid credits. Perfect. Not even like, it's not even <laughs> like, a, he's just like, I need this coffee. And he hits the button. And there's no even build up to it. It's just like, whoops, I hit the wrong button. Nuclear war. Who wants to freeze my head? <laughs> Who wants to freeze my head? <laughs> Which, 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 by the way, like that ending shot of him like popping out oh, of plane. Did you did you know that this movie was, was 3D. produced in three D? You say that I'm gonna do you one better. The opening shot of the paddle ball. That was that was like that was painful. Yep. yep. That that was that was the point where I was like, maybe I don't like this movie. Yeah, yeah I don't <laughs> know. All I'm gonna say here here is here's the first. Okay, first thing I thought was, wow, this movie is three D. The second thing I thought. How did Trader Dragon comes next? Oh my god! Like literally the defining 3D movie of all time. Yeah, like not animation. Yeah. I don't have much to say about Stephen Colbert other than that. Yeah, like, I thought it was funny. I thought, I thought it, was it was funny. funny. I thought the, yeah, I thought the political funny. jokes were really funny. Not obviously not as biting, but I still thought they were really funny. I thought uh, he didn't phone it in. I thought he acted pretty funny. Yeah. Um, and again, he had my favorite joke in the movie, which was the big red button. Which also, I guess that kind of feels to compare to in a way. But, you know, that's my favorite joke of the movie. I guess I also really liked when they were going over, like, plants and stuff. And he's, like, looking at everybody else to try to imitate how they're sitting so that he looks interested. And, like, he knows what he's, uh, people are talking about. I thought that was funny, too. Yeah, yeah. That, it's like, they they had some fun with it. It's like, okay, we have to get a president in here because these sorts of movies have, like, the government. What does the government have to think about this? Uh, so So they... They they have like all the stand up. They have a WR monger. Get it? Yeah. Uh, they, Did they, you think? What did you think of him? 
Oh, 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 already? Okay. I was still talking, <laughs> oh, but okay. Okay, sorry. I thought no, we were done. no, 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 no. You're, you're, no. you're, you're finished, and I'm finished. <laughs> I, I liked. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what you get for liking Bob. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with random on this one. Kiefer Sutherland. I did. I did not expect that out of Kiefer Sutherland. That was that was great. I really liked. Uh, I really liked uh, Mongo. Thing of me saying this, like the movie had started and they were setting up his character, and I'm like, oh, okay, so he's gonna lock up, you know, Jay Normico or whatever, and then he's gonna realize yeah. later that I was trying to keep the monsters locked up, but it turns out I either I shouldn't have been locking them up or I was locking myself up the whole time, something like that. And I mean, he does have like a weird change of heart with the monsters when they go to set them free. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be, oh, we're promising your freedom, and then. Uh, they don't give it to them, and he was going to be like a kind of villain and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. But I mean, you know, Monsters vs. Aliens pleasantly surprised me. He didn't really have an arc. He was just like, now I'm going to be like fun and funny and have like a entertaining personality. <laughs> and like, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, like he he literally just like works with them to like yeah yeah like like, like at the uh, towards the end he's just like it's been an honor like yeah. like he. It's like he, it's like he's their father or something. Yeah, yeah. The line where he's like, "If if I'm not there, I'm either late or I'm dead." I'm like, okay. Like, There's I, no I, reason I, this should be making me feel anything. Why is this making me feel things? Oh no, no, no like it's no, it's it's the because if 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 I don't come back, it means I'm dead. <gasps> Or yeah, I'm, I'm late. late. <laughs> and he's just like, like grumpy about yeah. that. Like and, and then they come back, he's like, where's the general? He said if he wasn't here, he'd be he's probably dead. And then he comes back on the on butterfly insect of stores. He's like, or oh, very late. <laughs> like that. I like that. Yeah. Like, the- it's funny, but it's, man, why? Like, even, even being corrected on the line read, I'm like, it still made me feel like, why? It feels like he's just doing what he's doing in the beginning because it's his job. Like, he doesn't want to keep her prison, but he's just doing it because he has to. He's like, good news! Everybody, you're getting out! I mean, given his name is W.R. Mongo, I, I think he probably has other, like, ulterior motives <laughs> with this, especially, like, when he when he comes in. By the way, that that was, like, when they go into the war, they, they set up the war room, and they have, like, a this, uh, uh, guy with a, a bunch of paperwork uh, doing all these different like uh like the 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 hand print the 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 tongue print the butt print and 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 that before he uh, runs in and then later on the the general like <laughs> barges in but he zips up his yeah pants. <laughs> yeah okay so when I first saw that like the shot you know taking the pants down and sitting on the thing I'm like oh butt joke that's like I I don't yeah care. butt joke I don't like, care yeah. I'm not too I don't care but when he came in zipping up his pants I'm like. <laughs> It was, it was Why is some... DreamWorks' is Monsters vs. Aliens making me react like this? I, this it's, is supposed it's, to it's... be throwaway. Why am I, like, kind of enjoying this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's leaving things unsaid, yeah. which just makes it so much funny. Yeah. yeah. Like, Nobody's like, hey, General, your fly is down. He, he comes yeah, in. Yeah. He comes in, zipping his <laughs> pants, saying, hey, nerds, I'm here with a plan. <laughs> Like you just hear the zip sound effect, and that's all you all need. You yep. need to know. All you that's need. All you need to know. <laughs> it's really good at show don't tell. So yeah. good at it, in fact. With most things. Oh, I guess that's the that's the lead off into Galactar. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Uh, I like Galactar's computer. Yeah. I like Amy Polo. Oh my god! Great. Oh my well, god! Is that, is that, is, did that have to be like a separate conversation? Let's start with her first. <laughs> let's start. Yeah, with, let's, let's start, let's start with, with the her. Computer. Like. I have to take back what I said before. I think this is my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love the no, cockroach. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. He's great, but, like, I love the sex. I, I like Amy, like, Amy Polo. God bless her. She's just a gem. Even, like, the, her last line is one of the funniest things. Three, two, one. Oh, nothing happened. Maybe my cat would... <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> so, so good it's so it's, good it's, i don't i i can't explain it very well uh for for our listeners but it's, it's just something so fun about her being so like straight yeah it's just, it's just a, 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 a just uh just playing it uh so straight face straight voice 
when uh, they break into the uh, central processing unit or whatever they call it, the brain of the of the ship, and uh, it it turns out like the they have to uh, hack the password using a DDR. Oh my tab. god, I forgot about that. And, and like the uh, the Doctor Cockroach does his uh, things and the. Uh, <laughs> He does. He does his uh, dance, and the computer uh, says, "says he has busted tired dance moves." <laughs> I just, I love, I just love, like again, straight voice story. But like there, and I love stuff like this. I said it already, but like there is such a a subtle yet over. Bearingly strong sense of sass to everything that she says. Yeah, yep. I yeah. love it, it so much. It's it's not easy to get right. I talk about it a lot. It's not easy to get right, despite how many people that I've talked about who've gotten it right. <laughs> but it's it's so funny. Not nearly as maniacal, but it's pretty uh, similar with like Glados from Portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was getting Karen vibes from SpongeBob. Oh, uh, kind, kinda. I mean, as not, far as, like, not more Glados than Karen for sure, but like, 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 uh, like her first, her, her first appearance. Yeah, when when she's like, one uh, percent evil, ninety nine percent hot gas. Yeah, like okay, now now I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like maybe not like the her more recent one, but yeah, no, definitely not now. But like oh, when yeah, she first appeared, I got it. Reminds me of that, only a bit more yeah. sass to it. I guess it just helps to to have a bit of sass. Both. That's a that's a lame lame villain. Yeah. You, mean, you mean you mean a lame villain? What happened? We had we had Rain Wilson, Dwight. Yeah, Dwight Groot, and also Super. I, I guess I'll, I'll say the obvious. No, he's not a bad as like uh, not Scar, whatever his name is from Madagascar yeah. Escape to Africa. Not not nearly that bad. But he's just so. Uh. I loved the sound his tentacles make when they stepped on the ground. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of uh, Squidward. Yeah, yeah, his whole design reminded me of Squidward a bit, but just with like more yeah, the, eyes. The, 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 I yeah, the giant head. Wish they would have made a joke about his eyes, because yeah, it's they like don't. they're they obviously don't. like they're they all they off. Like they're not. It's not like you know they're all blinking in unison. They're all staring at the same thing in unison. But like, did they? I don't remember a single one. Yeah, well, I mean, they they did like the 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 cartoony thing of like poking the eyes and like trying to like she's she trying to like poke the, his, uh, his eyes and he's uh, just like blocking. It oh, all is that the what she was through. trying to do? Yeah, yeah, that was what she was trying to do. And and uh, then she, I think she's just like whoo, and and she does the the screws thing with just poked with both <laughs> I hands. Yeah, I, I yeah. was thinking more of like again g- going. Have any of you seen Moana? I've seen Tamatoa, and by I've seen Tamatoa, I mean I've seen Shafer. All right, I, I've seen Moana, but I don't. There's know like what a you're joke where about. like to- Tamatoa is being threatening, and and oh. she looks the eye, and she's like, "Pick one," and he's like, "Come on, look, pick look, one, pick look one, at that, pick, 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 pick one, pick one, pick one, okay." Uh-huh. <laughs> and I wish they did something like that, just just okay. something to acknowledge it because it's all visual, which is usually fine, but like. It seemed it came off more as distracting than a joke. Just seeing his eyes, yeah. just like it geared. felt like you know in Toy Story one, where when characters blinked, like I can't recreate <laughs> it, but like they're oh, because of my VTuber model, I mean, but like their left <laughs> eye blinked like a second before their right eye, yeah, and it's yeah. because like they didn't have was it intentional, just because they didn't have a full grasp on how like the medium work. That's what this kind of felt like. And I think what they were trying to do with the eyes is that they they were especially like once they were revealed towards the end with the, is that he's just crazy, that like he 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 starts with having like a sad backstory, which is like my planet got destroyed. I'm sorry, your planet got destroyed. Used to be, I'm the one who destroyed it. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> oh my, oh god. my god! I wasn't the only one that thought of Metal Sonic, right? <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't the only. Yep, you weren't the only one that thought of, of Sonic ninety nine. Sonic 99. Yeah. Oh my god, the one line worth remembering. <laughs> the only line. Yeah, I was like, ah, I'm afraid of lightning. <laughs> lightning McQueen here. Lightning McQueen here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so we're gonna talk oh, about okay. uh bad guy McFive eyes. Um. Uh, yeah, yeah. I Galactoid. thought. When uh, he was given his backstory when he was the cl- making the clones and you heard like bits and pieces of it, I thought it went on a little too long, but I thought yeah. at the end when he was like, and that's the whole thing that that got a little chuckle. I really like this wasn't particularly funny and it's not a compliment to his character. I 
really liked when um because normally this is the other way around it's like the vil- uh you know the villain is captured and then they get out and the hero has to try to stop them he captures dynormica oh those you can't break those they're made of strong iron you can't get out and she gets out like easily and then he's like oh god and yes like, hey, <laughs> and he's trying to stop her computer put down the first door the second the third the fourth <laughs> all of them and she's yeah. just constantly breaking through them and he's just like in this state of panic i'm like like i said i like jen Ormica so after the breakup on the norm actually yeah it's so <laughs> great because you like you do see him and then he eventually like tricks her into going into the whatever chamber and then she turns to normal but she's still like she's still got that spirit in her which is really cool yeah yeah you, you two aren't gonna get this but in case somebody watching like sonic it's like the opening to sonic unleashed when eggman is running away from super sonic and he's like i'm sorry give me another chance and Sonic's like, I don't have to break all your toys if you just behave. And then Eggman hits a button and he traps him. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will get this, hopefully. S- somebody, if you get it, oh. hey, comment in the comment, <laughs> comment below. below. I, I, I guess it's just like a, like a tiny little thing that they, they didn't have to do, but the fact that, that like, uh, uh, jumping back to Dynamica, really, the fact that, that like, when she uh, goes to uh, uh, take the, whatever, hovercraft back, and she go and Dynamica goes through the whole the whole she made when she was giant. I don't know something about that. I was like, there's like a nice. It felt like a nice little payoff. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like. Oh, we already talked about Dynamica. Never mind. The alien, not so good. Like, I yeah, don't go care. I, I, which is surprising because again, it's he's voice acted well. He does a good. He's he, he should be funny. He's a funny actor. I just don't think the role gave him anything to work with. He was a bland villain. And I just, I don't know, like, every time I was on the screen, I was like, ugh, fine. And the fact that there was multiple of him, like, that's his thing. The clones are funnier than him. Yeah, clo- I was gonna say, the clones are more I interesting than him. I loved when the clone was like, oh, come on, do you seriously think that terrible disguise would work? You other clones, bring them to the destruction chamber. By the way, here's a security card in case you need it. Hell can, we have, in case you need it. can we have that gun? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. I, oh, God, and they were just like, Talking him, and throughout the whole, they were explaining their plan, just being like, "Hey, Galaxar, hey, Galaxar." <laughs> yeah, yeah, they kept on it, and like the third time they did it, you could even tell they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, whatever." <laughs> like they're just getting annoyed at having to say it. <laughs> if we're talking about like like extremely obvious three D shit. The the part where he's like, uh, he's like trying to make himself tea, and like all the tea stuff is floating in the air, and he's grabbing it from the air, and he takes a sip, and he spits it straight into the camera. It's like, God, and stop! Like, it, it sucks because like when he's making the tea, it's like oh, there's a lot of moving pieces here, you know. Th- obviously, three D or not, like yeah, I take the three D away, and it's like that's actually like kind of cool how this sci fi alien has all these moving pieces so that he doesn't have to work into making his tea. Like, okay, okay, and then he spits the tea out, and it's, like, paddle ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's it weirdly, like, the, 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 uh, the 3D aspect, it, it felt like they were challenging themselves to make more interesting shots because of it, but I, they were also, like, obligated yeah. to do all of the, the stupid gimmicks shit. Like, the, the, like, the paddle ball thing is, like, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a reference to, like, old 3D gimmicks. The, I think, House of Wax. With the one that that first had like a, a like a guy just showing up in the middle of the movie with a powder ball, like shooting it straight into the uh, in, into the camera, and it's like, hey, what's that, audience? Don't you want to knock out the popcorn? It's 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 so annoying. <laughs> it, it uh, I guess, so annoying. and not not to the credit of this movie, but like, if, if this was the stepping stone for how to train your dragon, I'll be less upset. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll. we'll it's, the, yeah, this was definitely like the road uh, over there when they were just trying to be, uh, better figure out 3D. And and actually, like, the gulf between a, a story like Monsters vs. Aliens and a story like How to Train a Dragon actually changed DreamWorks quite a lot uh, in the future. And I don't know if I have to talk about it here or when we get to Megamind. Maybe we can talk about it for Megamind. It, it was successful. It was a successful film. But it wasn't as successful as Katzenberg wanted, and it became kind of a it, it, beca- it became a, a a call for change in how they were gonna make animated features. But again, we can talk about that later. Yeah, Random is waiting for to say something. Um, I was just gonna say, can we talk about like the rest of the cast? Because 
what even the, the small roles have are like voiced by big name actors. Like we got Derek voiced by Paul Rudd. <laughs> is that your first time reading this name? Julie, uh, Julie White and Jeffrey Tambor as the mother and father. Uh, Jeffrey Tambor surprised me. Yeah. yeah, I didn't expect that. He, he's the one who says, get me the government. No, no, the, the guy who jumped out of the window like the priest. Oh, oh, wow. Shows how much I could tell the humans apart. Um, yeah, and yeah. And then the yeah, weird wa- scene, Renee Zellweger and John Krasinski as <laughs> Katie and Cuthbert? Kuth- uh, Cuthbert or Cuthbert? Oh, yeah, was- the I broke my ankle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is an out-of-nowhere thing that's like, it's, it's very obviously like a reference to like the classic trope oh, yeah. of like, to the, you know, teenagers hanging out and there's a big spooky thing uh, uh, coming. And in this case, the, uh, the genders are swapped. This time, it's the, it's the guy who's just like, I don't know about this. I, I, and the, uh, the, uh, the girl is, is like, uh, come on, let's go, let's go check this out. And, my and, leg! Uh, Carry my me! Le- okay. Yeah, the, I, think, it's, it's, I broke my I leg! Think, I think the tables have already turned, because I thought that scene was actually really funny. No, no, I did too. Yeah, I, I thought it was I great. That scene. I thought I liked that thing. I, I, I think okay. I think if it had like any importance to the movie, I wouldn't have liked it. Oh no, not yeah. at all. It's the, the fact, fact that yeah. like I mean, okay, it's like technically it has somewhat, but just the fact that it's like movie happens random scene rest of the movie happens right yeah, yeah they are never seen again never not seen even the post credits god they're never seen again thank god yeah if they were in the post credit they would it would it, like all of that magic would have been gone, gone. yeah gone for all we know they could be dead <laughs> yeah no but it's 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 like what wash said before like it's obviously not as good as kung fu Panda. i think we all agree but it's that same source right like you know we yeah. could just make Monsters versus aliens, Shrekify, like Shrek the monster and alien stories, but like, <laughs> and I mean, it is obviously goofier than Kung Fu Panda, but instead of it being like derogatory with love, it's just like a genuinely fun homage. And I don't yeah. like it that much. I'm not, I don't think it's great, but like, you know, I'm watching this and I'm like, you know, the people who made this, like, actually, I think they really like the monster movies and even yeah, alien yeah, movies, yeah. Not, not to the same extent, but even like alien movies, right? Like, I mean, I feel like there was definitely some references to like space movies with like the fleet of uh oh the giant stars. robots like that's it giant robots like those are even like the that's like the and fleet when of giant Galaxy- robot gets sucked in by the UFO like yeah even the bit of like Galaxar's marching like in a troop reminded me of Star Wars a bit yeah so. Like there's, they're, they're incompetent enough to be star troopers. Yeah, they, they literally <laughs> quote, <laughs> they literally quote monster movie title. There, there's a point where Galaskar says, "Clone, destroy all monsters." In the Godzilla movie. <laughs> I got that too. And, I got that too. And, I was and, so happy. And then later, and then later on, like Galaskar, he sees something, he goes, "Oh, space balls!" Yeah, like, I, like, that, that was obvious. Baseball? How do you knock it? That that one was like like yeah, plainly yeah, yeah. obvious. Destroy all monsters. But, but, I'm like, hey. Destroy all monsters. That, that's a very good like. That's a that's a little more subtle. Yeah, one. yeah. And that's like, like the best thing about the villain. <laughs> the best thing about him is when he said a Godzilla title. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. Oh, speaking of Godzilla, we didn't we, we didn't talk, to talk about, about her. Not Mothman. Not Mothman. Insectosaurus. Oh Insectosaurus. <laughs> Insectosaurus, Moth Woman, as it turns yeah. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that's. I think she's part of why I like the Go Fist theme. Yeah. It's like this, this, this. Like for some reason, like it could have just easily been like a giant dumb thing. But the fact that it was like smart enough to like try to help uh, uh, Link cheat yeah. at the at, at, at Go Fist. There's a bond between them and Missing Link, but also like they they're confident. Sure. They get easily distracted and by bright lights. That's that's their, their caveat. Their uh, their insectosaurus makes sense, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. Just it, it brought some life to the character. It, the it, death it, scene it, was stupid. I'm not gonna lie. That was just an excuse to get them to evolve, uh, like evolve in a cocoon. It, it, oh yeah, they were trying to make it like a sad thing, and it, there was just not nearly enough of that. No, nah. to, to pay off really. Yeah. And there's not nearly enough of the timer either. <laughs> well, it's like 
I, there was almost something when, like, uh, Insectosaurus uh, used her snot to, like, try to pull uh, Gynormica uh, away from the UFO tractor beam and then uh, get, get shot down from the... Like, there, there's something there. It's, it's definitely, like, adding some spice, adding some variety yeah. to this cast. Yeah, there's no variety uh, left to the timer, though. You know what doesn't have any variety? I, I already said it. Okay. You, she already said I, it, yeah. Right. You can't... <laughs> all right. You can't, you can't, we, we can't, we, we do the joke. <laughs> All right, final thoughts. This movie was fine. I thought it was fine. Better than I thought it was going to be, because I'll be honest, I was dreading this movie. I was completely dreading it from beginning. Going into it with a negative attitude, but it surprised me more than I thought it would. It was funnier than I thought. It had better writing than I thought. Again, it is crafted with a lot of great, uh, like, movie monster love and alien love into it there's some things i don't like about it galaxar bob um eric is predictable but there's some things i really like about it, like dinormica the cockroach insectosaurus um the the extras i like the extras even stephen colbert president is great if i were to add it and put it rank it i think it would be below over the hedge above madagascar too <laughs> So like number th- it's like number thir- number 13. This is one of those things where talking about it I'm thinking oh man do I actually think this movie is actually really good but I watched this recently enough no it's it is I still think it's fine but it is you know one of the best fine movies I've ever seen right It's uh <laughs> it, it's just so much I mean I you could convince me that this movie is good I don't have enough ill will against it to object to if you were like oh monster versus aliens that was a good movie i'd say i mean well okay it's your opinion i wouldn't argue either way but <laughs> you know if you were to ask me do you agree i'd be like yeah sure why not why not i'll give that one to you yeah this was a good movie but if you were to just impromptu say hey claire what do you think about monsters versus aliens i'd say why are you asking me this and then <laughs> i would answer ah, it's fine it's very good yeah. like very fine not very good it's very fine but just fine um Things that I don't like, we talked about. Bob, sorry. Uh, the villain, uh, the the designs of the humans like remind me too much of Megamind to say that they're bad. But the actual like CG of the humans in this movie, yes, I don't like. Um, it's not as bad as Shrek the Third in this regard, but I do think it had the Shrek the Third issue of jokes that went on for too long. I thought the 3D was very 3D. Um, just some problems like that. But for every problem I have, there's something that I like. I like Ginormica. I really like Dr. Cockroach. Computer, best part. Uh, some great jokes. President, don't hit that button. You'll start a nuclear war randomly in the mid credits. You hit the button. Um, uh, the general calling that one guy a nerd and giving him a wedgie. Like, oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, no, those are, those are Mongo. Yeah, Mongo. Mongo. Yeah, the general guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. general. Yeah, yeah. The bizarrely effective emotional beats in DreamWorks' Monsters vs. Aliens. Don't think I've forgotten about, I felt like I just got hit by a meteorite. Don't think I forgot about that. Uh, there's just for everything that I don't like about this movie, there's something that I like. And I think that it results in a movie that, again, on the scale of it being fine, one of the best, still at the end of the day, just fine. Now, where I rank it, though, um, I was a little bit torn because I definitely liked it more than Madagascar 2. Um Madagascar I mean, 2 is when we get into the territory of uh, I don't like the movie, and I liked it more. Yeah. And the I movie mean, I had above so Madagascar 2 was Road to El Dorado, and I'm like, there's, there's no way. There's no way I like this more than uh, El Dorado. And, like, it's so tough. Is it, like, really great characters with a terrible story versus a movie that, you know, I don't have too many issues with, but does not have the highs of El Dorado, and... This might change, especially after talking about it, but I went with El Dorado, and I still think I'm going to have Monsters vs. Aliens at number 12. I- I'm still yeah. that. I, I yeah. might change my, like, talking about it, and specifically, ta- like, especially talking about, like, the computer and stuff. Like, I might change this, but for now, Monsters vs. Aliens at number 12, El Dorado number 11. Yeah! I got you, I got you. Now, I know, obviously, we're comparing Monsters vs. Aliens to El Dorado, and Wash is about to talk, we are going to compare the most beautiful form of life that we know versus the most disgusting. So, go ahead. Like I said at the start, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed myself. 
Uh, I don't know if it's like something about if it's something about the uh, like movie monster, like those classic movie monsters that I like. This this those weird cryptids that I just find like uh, appealing in some way. It it was just a, like a fun homage. It got like a lot more laughs out of me than I expected. For some diabolical reason, Bob was appealing to me. I really enjoyed. I I I kind of enjoyed Bob. I really kind of enjoyed Bob. This was hard for me because it was like there were so many other movies that had like much bigger highs. For instance, uh, Chicken Run. Chicken Run I felt like had like the the first fifteen minutes and the last fifteen minutes had like are the super big highs, and then there's the rest. <laughs> and and Monsters vs Aliens, as I said in the start, it was actually like consistently good. And I felt that that it was like. Like the fact that I that I skipped all the way to Chicken Run tells you that like it's not in the same ballpark. It's like over the heads or or, or like uh, Road to El Dorado for me. It's like button up heads with like the other with like the other Ardman films like uh uh like Chicken Run and Flushed Away. Not not of course not. Not where we're I was about, about to say. I'm about to say. <laughs> Whoa. The, 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 the thing is like the, that's the, that's the one good one from from DreamWorks. <laughs> And then there's the the, the the rest that are just kind of all over the place, especially in terms of script. Like this one, it's like I I thought there was like there was a, there was something solid enough with with their monsters versus aliens, and this contains I put it slightly above Chicken Run. Wow, what number is that for you? That's number seven. Whoa! Wow. Oh. oh my god! Higher than Austin uh, by. Far. Yeah, 13, 12, 7. Holy moly. Yeah, but again, this is something that's going to change. It's can, in your uh, top 10, watch. It can definitely change. Uh, maybe like upon uh, a rewatch of like Flushed Away or a Chicken Run. I gave this like three stars, and I thought it was more consistent of a three star than, than so many others with that same rating. Like, it's, it, it's, it just held itself up pretty dang well. I, I think it could have been with uh, Conrad Verdon having like directed Shrek too. That's like it's just more consistent, like like actually putting in some times, like making like better jokes, not so much better character. Yeah, we're we're, we're not. I, I I nearly put this in, like three and a half star, but the more I thought about it, I was like no 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 no. It can't. <laughs> it's it's not that close. I'm not I'm not putting it like it, it, it's it's not on the side of like Shrek for me. Yeah. It, it it really needed. They really need to get some better characters, and and I know we got another one coming up, and they hopefully hopefully that's gonna change it. But like, man, I'm I'm really waiting for them to like lock down on on script like they did with like, with the with with the mo- movies above this. I'll just say. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, strangely enough, this is this is on my top ten. I I like Bob enough that. <laughs> That he didn't sink it <laughs> into into the the that ranking. Ooh. Okay, that is not where I expected this to go at all. No. I I I will I will I will say this much. Like, I mean, I guess this is more so for random and I than for a watch. But like, yeah, I do feel like people give just like fine movies a bit of a bad rap. Yeah. Like, oh, a yeah. movie is fine. Like doesn't mean anything a movie's got to be good like there is nothing wrong with a movie that you just watch and is fine yeah sometimes i would rather watch a movie like that because if it's a good movie then it's like you know i'm gonna get like too into it and sometimes i just want to like vibe and watch you know there's an appeal to those sorts of movies that show up on cable and you just sit down you didn't have any plans to watch it but you just sit down and you just kind of like like when I watched uh what was it called Meet the Robinsons the the Disney movie yeah uh the with the the future kid like I just remember like that showing up on on TV one day and I just sat down and I watched it and it's like this is fine this is fine fine there's no like place for that anymore you can't like stumble upon a movie you, you, it, it can't just like show up on streaming one day you have to like make an active choice now yeah. so everything has to be like great or awful mm-hmm. Let, let's give a shout out to those fine movies yeah let's exactly. give a, a shout out to the chicken run and to to, to madagascar 
Like, you are fine. I enjoy you well enough. <laughs> No, that being said, the next movie we're watching is not. <laughs> oh, I'm looking oh, forward to that. Yes, I. Uh, what, what the only thing I know is that uh, the reason we got that movie is because of some drama in another studio. Yes. Really, I didn't get to talk that that much about drama, uh, the DreamWorks drama in this one. Oh, was there any? I, I I did hint on a little bit with like uh, how what like Kastenberg, uh thought about like the the box office returns for this. But that's a, that, that other thing is going to be a discussion for another day. So, yeah, the next one, there was a lot of drama <laughs> and, a, and a different animation studio. And uh, DreamWorks, uh, old pal Jeffrey said, hey, let's come <laughs> over here. Yeah, let's head on over here. You got this dragon movie? We heard that, that Disney's making a dragon movie. So we got <laughs> <laughs> It's been, it's honestly been, I can't wait. It's been way too long since we've talked about Jeffrey Katzenberg. Yeah. What was like flushed yeah. away? God, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. other than like the little quip here and there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On that note, yeah. that's next time, and I cannot wait. We didn't even say what the movie was. It, we all know. No, I mean, yeah. We shouldn't drag on about it, though. I do think it's really funny. I sorry to ruin your setup, random. I just completely killed the momentum. I'm sorry. I do think it's really funny. Yeah, it's the saddest face <laughs> that the podcast can't see. I just think it's really funny that we were all that we were like, man, it's like we got all these big movies coming up and Monsters vs. Aliens is just like here in the middle. It's like whatever. And then we watched it and we all enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we have some other like terrible movies coming up. Yep. But I feel like we've we've mostly driven past the valley of DreamWorks. We shall see. But this time, you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash WRK Podcast and uh, check us out on, on video form. Uh, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, like, hit the bell, and, and uh, just, just kind of let us know what you think about this podcast. You can also uh, uh, download us, listen to us in audio form wrk.simplecast.com and wherever else you may get your podcast. You, if you want to know when the next uh, uh, episode comes out, we post updates on that on twitter.com slash wrkpodcast. And let us know when the next one comes out, which will be How to Train the Dragon. Yes. Yeah, fine. I was always waiting. I was like, are we ever going to say it? I mean, we, we, people who know... We're, we're allowed to say it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. It's I, just like, are we going to? That's the question. Is this the point where it's like, well, I, I already stopped watching uh, DreamWorks movies? This was definitely the point for me. I, th- I stopped a while ago. I think I stopped after B-Movie. Yeah, B-Movie, because I never saw Kung Fu Panda and Magus. Yeah, stopped after B-Movie. Okay, there's pro- I, I, uh, looking at this, there's probably, there are two more films that I've definitely seen uh, beforehand. Uh, we we probably make a guess into why I saw those before, but yeah, this, like this was two thousand nine. We started to get into high school. Like by, by this point, like DreamWorks was just like an annoying company. It's like, oh god, Monsters Inc. is alien. It just looks shitty. Uh, B movie. Never... Come on now. <laughs> we we just never paid attention to it, but from from that point on, but it, it's it's maybe we're missing out on something. Until then, I'm random bystander here. I'm the wash. I am Claire. Which one of these buttons ends the podcast? Uh, is it this one? No, don't do it. You just poured a cup of coffee. Hit the one next to it. It'll start a nuclear war. Oh, cool. As long as it ends the podcast. Beep. Doot doot. All right. Which one of you wants to freeze my tail? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't push the button. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. All right, bye. bye.